Hi, this is Michael Oral from MobileBurn.com, and today I have with me the BlackBerry Torch 9800. It's the first BlackBerry from RIM to feature the new OS 6 operating system. This one's available from AT&T for $199.99 with a two-year contract starting August 12th. So here's the Torch in its box, you know, pretty compact packaging here. Uh, let's open it up, let's see what we've got inside, of course. This is the torch itself. We'll set this here. And let's take a look at what else comes inside. Torch uh, quick start guide. Uh, information on connecting to a PC. A mini CD with uh, Blackberry user tools. Safety and product information. Here we have a set of stereo headphones. Three and a half millimeter jack, of course. Uh, there's a microphone right here. Looks like a button for call send and end. Very compact USB type charger. Let's see if I can get that off there. Really kind of cool. And that attaches to this cable here which has a full-size USB for connecting to a PC or the charger and of course micro USB on the other end. Here's the device's battery. It says it has a 1270 milliamp hour rating. And lastly it looks like we have a cleaning cloth for the Torch's touchscreen with a BlackBerry logo there. So here's the Torch itself. Uh, pull this protective coating off of the 3.2 inch touchscreen display. It's uh, 360 by 480 pixels in resolution. Let's take a look at the external controls first. On the left hand edge we have that micro USB port for uh, charging and data. 5 megapixel camera with flash on the back. The rear cover is a plastic but almost rubbery feeling. It's a, like a very hard rubber coating on it. So a nice little grip to it and the, and the ribs give it a little bit of extra grip. On the right hand edge we see the uh, three and a half millimeter headphone port, volume control here, and then a uh, soft key probably for the camera by default. Unusual that we don't see one on the left hand edge, so normally the BlackBerry devices come with a user definable key on both the left edge and the right edge. Nothing too much to see but the ATT logo at the bottom, and up top here you can see we've got the mute button and the lock button. Slide it open, of course, to reveal the QWERTY keyboard, which is the uh, big feature of the device. Peel off these additional covers here if I can. And that shows we've got uh, a couple of hardware keys down here, call end and power, call send right here, the BlackBerry menu button, and the back button. And this is, of course, the optical trackpad. Uh, in spite of the fact that they look like touch buttons, these are actually hardware buttons. There's a click. Not particularly loud, but you can definitely feel it. Slide it open and take a look at the very bold-like keyboard. It looks uh, very similar to the key shape and everything we've been seeing on the Bolt series for quite some time. Nicely separated, uh, well-defined, hard plastic keys, good solid click, uh, nice layout. If you like the Bolt, you're probably going to like this quite a bit too. And it doesn't seem like the top edge of the uh, slider here gets in the way, so it looks like you have enough space to operate in. So let's take a look at the UI. First thing you notice is that it works in both landscape and portrait modes. Looks similar to what we've seen on other BlackBerry devices recently. You can see there's a row of icons from the main menu down here. What has changed though is that hitting the BlackBerry key no longer takes you to a main menu. Instead it brings up a context sensitive menu like in the rest of the device. To get to the main menu, you tap on the header here and the main menu actually shows up on the home screen here. You can tap again, you can also swipe and that allows you to get to the main menu. You also have the option of adjusting the height of it. 
so as it'll remember what your preference was for one, two, three, or actually no rows whatsoever. So you can hide the entire thing and expose it just by tapping on it. Now you notice right here we see the, the back end of frequent and over here we see the beginning of favorites. It's because you can swipe left and right. You can do it inside um, the menu area to swipe back and forth between the different sections. So you see there's frequently used applications. This is populated automatically by the phone. Downloads, anything you download automatically shows up in here. Media is a separate section. You do have options for moving things around though. If you long press on something with either your finger, you can see there's a move icon there. And you don't actually have to use the touch screen to do that. If we use the trackpad and long press on the trackpad, you'll get that same context sensitive menu. So you could say mark something as a favorite. It'll automatically show up in the favorites. You can move it around. You can hide it entirely. Of course, you could also launch it. Be a silly way to do so though. So let's mark this as a favorite. And now if we go over to favorites, there you see web video search just showed up. Long press again on it. Unmark it as a favorite and it disappears. If we tap on the very top of the screen, you get access to wireless settings. So you can turn the uh, 3G network on and off, Wi-Fi connections, Bluetooth, and even run uh, diagnostics and set up new Wi-Fi connections. You'll also notice that there is a new notification area right here. You can see that it says there's nine messages, and that's actually the social feed icon. So if I just tap on that, the curtain automatically scrolls down and you see all the different notifications. In addition to notifications, you'll see your upcoming calendar appointments. So you can see I've got uh, three appointments coming up. One new text message and a couple of other email messages. Missed phone calls also show up there. And there's the social feed stuff that I mentioned earlier. And we'll take a look at all those features a little bit later. You'll also notice that we have a search feature here. If the keyboard's not slid open, you know, phone's closed like this, then it'll bring up a on-screen virtual keyboard. You have options for either a short type keyboard or the full QWERTY. I have the full QWERTY set up right now. Uh, regardless of what you have set up, whether it's a uh, short type or the full QWERTY, when you go into landscape mode, it always goes to a full QWERTY. So just to show you how the universal search works, uh, I'm going to type, let's see, black. I'm going to swipe down to get rid of the keyboard and you can see the search results. There's a contact called Jack Black and then it's also going to find email messages and other things from uh, something that relates to black, uh, probably also from Jack Black. Calendar appointments. Now you can see it says there are 11 things under the calendar. So if I tap on the calendar, you can see all the different appointments that match up with that. These are all just test appointments we have, of course. Now if we go back, you can see we can just as easily, without even tapping on that search function there, you can just start typing in something. For example, mobile burn. And you'll see we've got email messages that match, uh, Google Talk, everything. And we can actually automatically do a search for Google, although it doesn't have the uh, Google logo there or YouTube. So if I just hit down here on the screen or use the trackpad, it will automatically launch the browser and do a search. And you can see it's searched on Mobile Burn. Universal search on the uh, BlackBerry Torch and OS 6 in general is, is quite nice. It's very useful. And if you don't want all those different types of items showing up, in your search. You can go into search options and uncheck things like say you don't want to ever search particular email accounts or uh, anything like that or didn't want to search calendar entries or root browser history. You can uncheck things as, you, as needed. So, You'll notice up here we still have the profile settings. Very easy to switch profiles this way and profiles have been organized a little bit better and you'll notice that there are nice little icons here for the various categories. If we jump into options which used to be a huge list of items you'll see it's also been similarly organized. 
So now we have a nice display section. You can go and display and see little icons for each different section. Makes it a little bit easier to navigate and remember what's where.